Hi, everybody. We are here. Uh, we had absolutely, holy wow, just a beautiful, incredible, incredible guest speaker. This morning, we had Casca Graham with the Casca Graham Academy. Uh, we learned so much. Um, she actually, too, shared a beautiful um, dragon experience with us where we actually got to to incorporate that into our our, our body, if you will, our soul body, our, our human body. And then we also got to hear her uh, incredible light language in that process. And then we had a deeper conversation around that. So it's just been a, a beautiful, beautiful morning. We did a, a grounding this morning and know that um, whoever comes into this for the rest of this day, uh, throughout this entire event, uh, you have already been included in that beautiful grounding, that beautiful coming into this incredible sacred space. Let me, first of all, uh, ground everybody. So everybody take a moment to feel into the energy of who you are in this space asking yourself and all your mind, body, soul, and all aspects of yourself to be open and willing to receive and share, accept, trust, and believe. And as we come back into this beautiful space, I'm going to add uh, my friend, Joanne, to the spotlight, and I'm going to read a little bit about her. First of all, I've, I personally have known Joanne probably for about um, I'm I'm guessing more familiar to her over the last two years and have seen her around in circles that I've been in for the last three or four years. However, she is so much more than what I've witnessed of her because I've seen her in, in the arena that I've seen her in. We're very, very much into the astrological stuff and, and just watching her, her awareness and her knowledge in there is so powerful. And she's also spent 35 years in the health, fitness, and wellness industry and 15 years in the healing industry. She's the founder of the Holistic Fitness, Holistic in Integrative Teacher, and a certified holistic personal trainer. She's a Reiki master, a medical astrologer, and master of numerology. And she's also the host of Joanne's Healing Within TV show. I know I follow her over on TikTok, and it's really interesting seeing some of this stuff come up. Um, she's author and self-publisher, just like Casca is, um, and the creator of the Chakra Balance Numerology Cosmic Energy Forecast Deck. Joanne has helped over 20,000 people, women specifically, gain confidence, encouraged to walk away from the material job and embrace their soul's calling. So hello and welcome, Joanne. So, so beautiful that you're here. Hello and thank you so much for having me. And wasn't that a mouthful? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes. I, I, I know when I introduce myself. Um, on all my different platforms and I go through that whole shamil it's like that is a mouthful and I love when people ask for my bio and they say just a few lines please and I'm like how do I put that in just a few lines and that is just a few lines because there's so much more to my yeah. bio than what we just talked about yeah very powerful so um, as mentioned, I know you coming in from the astrological thing and, and reading in your thing, your your bio, your thing, <laughs> that you're <laughs> a medical astrologer. I know you came on, um, you know, you're going to talk about something very, very specific on one hand, but can you maybe just enlighten us to what this is, a medical astrologer, before sure. you go into talking about the how to reven, and maybe this is all part and parcel as well, a reven, reven, oh my gosh, tongue tied. You would think I had peanut butter just now. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 would like to talk more in depth about revolutionizing health, fitness, and wellness. So I imagine that that this um, mass medical astrology does come into play with that, right? Yes, yes. So a little bit about medical astrology, comparing it to astrology, is not very different other than I put more of a focus on astrology with the physical body and when I look at the different placements on one's chart my eye goes right to um, health issues um, what's blocking them in their physical body um, and just the just the um, energy around their emotional um, um, aspects that may be the very thing that's causing the blockages in their physical body. So when studying medical astrology, 
or have any option to, okay, do I want to study astrology? Do I want to study medical astrology? It's like, well, it really makes more sense for me to study medical astrology just because of my field. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, blending the traditional astrology into what I do, but having the eye of knowing that when I do work with clients, women specifically, that when I'm looking at their chart, my eye goes to, okay, what is the reason why they have this, I'm going to use this for this issue with weight, if there's an issue with weight, or what is the reason why they have this lack of relationship with food or this under under defining relationship with their physical body and it all it all really shows up in their chart and the process of it is to then help them work on releasing whatever those beliefs are that theoretically they were born into and also because they were born into and a lot of you may know this you know if you're over the age of 65 you carry what's known as a chiron moon in the in in aquarius and I love when um, when you were saying, Sandra, for us to accept our weirdness. And as a Chiron moon in Aquarius, it is about your, your being weird and trying to fit in. We're not supposed to fit in. And I say we, not that I have a Chiron moon in Aquarius, but I do have a moon in Aquarius. And I think that's just as intense as a Chiron moon in Aquarius because it's about my feelings. And the one thing I've come to learn over the years is, A, I'm not meant to fit in. I'm meant to be as bold as I can be based on the colors because I want to stand out. I want people to remember me based on the the things I do say. And I also want them to remember me in case they forgot what I've said. I want them to say, oh, wait a minute. The girl with the turquoise hat on with her logo on the hat, that's that. Yeah, her. And that's the Aquarius, you know, and me owning my weirdness. And helping others own their weirdness and helping them to see their in their chart, well, this is what this is, and you're not supposed to fit in. And whatever the weight is associated with, let's work on that and not, let's not be so quick to say, well, I want to lose 20 pounds, you know, which dives right into the, the conversation of revolutionizing health, fitness, and wellness, you know, as being in the industry for as long as I have been almost over 40 years for that matter. And I've witnessed so much in the industry and I, and I still witness, there's still so many um, professionals out there that still focus on the conventional way of going about fitness or health or wellness. And theoretically, when we think about it in the last four years, I mean, every one of us experienced an opportunity to quiet ourselves down with the help of the pandemic. So from four years ago, we are definitely not the same that we were beforehand. We are all more evolved now. Our frequencies are higher. We are very different than before. So therefore, if we are trying to use the same conventional approach in regards to our health, our fitness, and our wellness, it's not going to match because we are not that version anymore. You know, and thankfully, I'm the only one, only practitioner out there talking about this. And that will change over time because a big portion of my mission is to get my clients who are interested in becoming practitioners to start training them so they learn my methodology and they're willing to teach it as well. So there'll be more people out there talking my language to help more people out there become more aligned with the non-conventional way of doing things and the revolutionized way of this is going to work better for me rather than talking about having to walk. Let's say how many of us want to walk 10,000 steps a day? I know I don't. You know, how many people out there are walking 10,000 steps a day because American Heart Association says that's what we need to do to give up keep our heart healthy in reality you could do a 15 20 minute strength training program 15 20 minutes and keep your heart healthy i don't know about you ladies and guys out there but i'd rather do 15 or 20 minutes of strength training that's going to be exhilarating and get me to the same results than than, than walking 10,000 steps a day no i i don't feel that and i myself used to be a group fitness instructor so yes I've done the classes. I mean, in the beginning stages of my career, I used to teach five aerobic classes a day, five hours a day, seven days a week. 
So I've done it all. So I know the whole process of like, yes, it's a lot of fun. You get your endorphins kicked in. Ask me to do five aerobic classes now, not happening. 15, 20 minutes, I'm good with. You know, so when we think about that revolutionizing process and just how who we are now, you know, we, we are not the same version of ourselves yeah. four years ago. Um, I, I'm loving this. Uh, there was a question specifically about the uh, what is medical astrology. And, and what I'm hearing you say is it very much has to do with the signs and the feelings portion of that. So the specific, possibly the houses or specific placement of the moons in our birth charts. And then, you, you know, we can obviously go further than that. But in layman's terms, do you have a sentence or two that you could throw out there for the people who really don't understand what medical astrology is? Okay, well, let's let's take the two and, and separate them for just a second, okay? Because I think we're getting caught up on the term medical astrology. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, what is that? That's yeah. some weird thing. Medical, so when we think about the word medical, it's like looking at the medicine and seeing medicine as prescribed as medication, you know, for whatever is going on in our bodies. So when we talk about medical astrology, astrology is about your planets, about the sun, the moon, and all the other planets we have in our charts, the houses. Mm -hmm. And depending on one's chart can define medically if there is um, a challenge in one's chart that they are here in this lifetime to work through. So again, rather than focusing on someone that may have, we use an illness, for example, you know, many people, and um, this is not to be, this is not to be used to trigger anybody. You know, there's so many women who, who have challenged with breast cancer. It's a contract they have. It's in their astrology, in their astrology chart. And some who have that contract with breast cancer, they have the contract either A, to learn something deeply from that experience and they heal from it. And then you have some that have the, the contract with breast cancer where that is what they've called on to move through their journey so they can cross over. And right. through their astrological chart, I can sit with them to help them understand what their journey is. Now, I would never say to anybody with their chart, well, this is your path and this is how you're going to cross over. That's not my job. My job is to point out what their lesson can be and how can they utilize this specific issue, this particular medical issue to learn and experience and, and discover themselves and also their family members as well, because we all know that most of our challenges is not just for us, it's the people around us, you know, to teach either patience or love or compassion or understanding, and the list goes on. So when we think of medical astrology, it's just really looking at one's chart to be able to define when someone comes to me with some sort of health issue, you know, okay, well, let's look at the chart and let's see if there is an emotional underlining condition to this medical issue? And can this issue that is emotional, because again, let's face the facts of things, I believe everything stems from our emotions. And if we didn't address the emotion at the time the emotion showed up and it gets pushed down, over time that's gonna create inflammation in the body. Yep. And that over time is gonna create the illness to become more intensified. And I can see that on a chart on, okay, this is the lesson. This is what we need to do and give them pointers in regards to when a specific planet may retrograde and give them the idea that, okay, during this time, this is your time to do your intense work. This is the time that you really want to, where we bring into the, bring the fitness into it. This is the time where you really want to focus in on helping your body be the healthiest version it can be. So your issue that you have doesn't become more enhanced. Wow. And this then by doing, go ahead. I'm, I was just gonna say, this is so powerful. And I'm, I'm really hoping, like, if you, if you guys are finding this hard to digest, I definitely recommend coming back and having listened to this. In essence, nothing is written in stone. 
this is a pathway or an explanation or uh, uh, a lesson or a learning tool that's going to help you to move through something. Nothing is necessarily a death sentence, but it's a, a method, it's a tool, it's a journey, it's a pathway, as I just said, that's going to move us through to somewhere else. And I so wholeheartedly agree with you. And and just because this is Joanne and my um what we resonate with, feel free to resonate with what each of you resonate with. I agree, though, with regards to and when you tap into that, and you leave those emotions and those feelings stuck in yourself. Um, you are causing your human body a lot of harm, and it can actually fester and, and grow in really bizarre ways. I've witnessed this in immediate family members in a number of them. And so if there's if I'm aware enough to recognize something is going on, and I've also done the medical end of things, like gone to the doctor, had tests done and what have you, and things still aren't settling down, then I am also going to look at the energetic source of this, which is what Joanne is really bringing home with this. Yeah. yeah and, and in fact, in regards to that, I recommend the two. I recommend that, yes, if someone is experiencing whatever issues are showing up in their, in their expression, I like is whatever issues is showing up in your tissues, to definitely go to the medical side of it, get the diagnosis, then come back to me. And let's sit down with the diagnosis so we can then define the metaphysical explanation. And once we get to the metaphysical explanation, we can then decide together what we're going to do. What approach are we going to take in reference to healing? Are you ready to dig deep and discover where this emotion stems from and pull that emotion out from the root? Now, I use the word, are you ready? And the reason why I say that is because it's a journey. And sometimes whatever the issue is that's in the tissue, sometimes there's a payoff for having that issue. And what I mean by that is as women and some men, because I know we have men here, so I don't want to leave them out. When we think about anything we're experiencing, so if something stops us in our tracks where we have to be laid up or we can't do our usual masculine thing that we do, we need to then indirectly ask for help. Now, most women have a challenging time receiving help. We're really good at helping others. Yet we have a challenging time saying, hey, Sandra, today I'm not really able to do my 100%, so can you lend me a hand? Now, my pride, my ego, and my like, oh my God, I have to ask for help. And a big part of when someone has an issue in their tissues, that help shows up without them asking. So theoretically, when there's different things going on in our world, because it's collective energy we also feel, sometimes we'll get that attack in our body where the issue gets inflamed. And also, of course, where it's like, oh my God, I, I need help now. And that means I have to ask for it. Or someone just shows up and just provides the help. We don't actually get to speak and ask. And a big part of asking yourself, am I ready to let go of my payoff and accept the fact that I am okay with asking for help? I don't need to be laid up for someone to help me. I can easily say, you know what, on this day, this day, and this day, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to ask for help. And the minute you make that decision to allow yourself to speak up and ask for help, you may start to notice the condition starts to simmer down because now you're actually allowing yourself to receive just as much as you're always giving. And a big part of many of our issues that do show up are just lessons from the universe to say, are you ready to ask for help? Anyone's going to give you help, but are you ready? Can you literally say to somebody, hey, you know what? I can't open up this box. Like for me, I mean, I have muscles. The average person knows that I can move a couch if I wanted to. And it takes a lot for me to say to my husband, um, hubby, could you come open the can for me? He looks at me like, you want me to open the can for you? Yeah, I can't open it. I don't want to break my nails. So could you open the can for me? The silliest things allow me to step into my 
feminine energy, my vulnerability to say, I need help. And I, I, I myself this? say that again. I want to expand on this. I'll let go ahead and finish your sentence there. I want to expand on this a bit. I myself have worked extremely, extremely hard on getting to that point where I can ask for help. That I don't have to be laid up. I don't have to get hurt. I don't have to have a, something, a sensitive area of my body be inflamed for me to say I need help. I can just say, you know what? I need help today. I'm going to just put my hands up and say, today I want your help. I want you to do this, 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 and this for me today. And I'm I'm all for that. And be, since doing that, it allows my ability to be feminine, my ability to be vulnerable, and my issues in my tissues not to flare up as much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I love what you're saying because I was in the position where I continued to have accidents and injuries until I finally decided, well, I didn't decide. I was put into the position where I had to ask for help because the injuries had gotten so severe that I had no choice but to ask for help. Having said that, I, I'm very clearly hearing you say too, though, that um, there's now this this area where you don't have to experience the things I experienced or possibly that Joanne experienced to get to the point of asking for help. The sooner that we as individuals, as human beings, learn to ask for help right now I, and the smallest things, even if by saying, hey, universe, I would like help, you don't necessarily have to go, hey, Joanne, I need help. But you can, even if you just put it out there to the world that you're asking for help, into the energy that you're asking for help, you have already started to change the dynamics of the issue in the tissue. Big time. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and that is the big part in regards to when we think about our physical pain in our bodies, like becoming more aware of what the physical pain is about the story behind the physical pain. I truly believe that our bodies are our biggest messenger. So when something's showing up in our physical body, it's our body's way of letting us know that we need to bring something back into balance, back into alignment. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's always about asking for help. Sometimes it's just really about paying attention to your body, being more tuned to what is it that your body is trying to get your attention on. And again, it comes back when we talk about this revolutionizing health, fitness, and wellness. It's really about this process of becoming in tune an in tune and attuned to our physical body where we all have the ability to be intuitive and we've all had this great um opportunity during the pandemic to access this beautiful gift of intuition and when we can learn to tap into the intuition coming into the to the language now of nutrition we can then be the best chef for ourselves in reference to what is the right food plan to eat as opposed to restricting, such as, you know, we hear, I mean, I know I hear because it's in my industry, in reference to you can't have carbohydrates, you have to do a high protein diet, you want to minimize your amount of fat. Ladies over 40, you need high protein, you need 100 grams of protein a day. And that's just an example, I'm not saying you do. You know, and when you start thinking of that, it's like, well, how the heck is this even going to play out into my lifestyle to do just this? And the reality of it all is my approach is let's stop listening to the cookie cutter approach that most practitioners are talking about out there. It's not a one size fit all to start off with. Second of all, most of the practitioners who are speaking out there, sharing their knowledge based on their own experience, is based on their own experience. Now, again, tuning my own horn, I got 40 years of experience in this field. I've worked with over 20,000 women where I've done experiments with so many different women on what they can and cannot, how they should and shouldn't, based on their food um, progression. And teaching them how to tap into their intuition to decide, do I want to have this cookie? Mm. Do I need to have this cookie? And I use the word want and need, and I use cookie as the example, because we also want to remember we want to feed our inner child. 
Yeah. Because again, remember, we are spiritual beings having multitude of human experiences. And our inner child is a part of that spiritual being. And our inner child needs to be heard and seen because most inner childs, when they were younger, probably were not heard nor seen. So it's our responsibility now as adults taking care of our inner child to make sure we are hearing and seeing and taking care of the responsibility of feeding. Now, when we speak to, if, if we speak on the feeding aspects based on the conventional way, that's emotional eating. We're not supposed to do emotional eating. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. If my inner child says, I want to eat a pint of ice cream, I'm going to sit there and eat a pint of ice cream. And there's not going to be any guilt behind it. And is, is it going to be the point where, like, in three days, I'm going to get on a scale to see if I put on weight? Hell no. I don't need to get on a scale to see if I put on weight. My inner child wanted ice cream. I gave my inner child ice cream because mm -hmm. I listened. That is the revolutionizing way of going about nutrition in reference to tapping into your intuition, asking your body, does my body need this? Does my body want this? And both are equally important. One doesn't overweigh the other one. And the reality of it all is there's really no such thing as I can't have this, which is something we hear in the, in the nutrition industry to begin with. It's that you shouldn't have this or don't have this. Why? Why? Because we've been programmed to believe certain things about food and because we've been programmed to believe it. And I'm not saying that it's not out there and the information that we're hearing isn't accurate. I'm just saying that we're in a time of our lives where we can decide, we can shift our mindset and say, you know what? Does this belief really work for me? Mm. Do I truly believe that this particular food that I'm going to eat is not going to provide me the nutrients that my body needs, even though science may back it up and say, no, our foods are not bad. Our foods are poisonous, chemicals, this thing and that thing. This is where, as I put it, Reiki comes in with our food, where we can energize mm. the food and allow our bodies to take in as much nutrients from that food that that food has so we can be in alignment to what serves us, not what we're hearing from the outside world, the conventional ways of going about things. So it's really about taking your power back and becoming your own advocate to what is best for you. I want to add to this. Uh, As you do, I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I, I, and, you know, you, you, you brought up this topic and, and I'm only using it as a showcase to this, to what you're exactly saying here, that we have so much power in our ability and we are really being asked to recognize this. You brought up the, um, that because of the pandemic, we had the ability to kind of shift and switch gears. And so many of us did. We either went in one direction or the other. That's not why I'm bringing it up. What I'm bringing it up for is I was placed into a situation where if I wanted to see certain people in my life, and that was my choice, if I wanted to see these people in my life, that I would have to take the, uh, do the, the, the COVID shots, whatever they are. Right. And um, I struggled with that. I really, really struggled with that. But what I did do was something that you're speaking about right here. It is, I literally said to myself, to my energetic body, to my soul energy, you, I'm going to go do this because society would like me to do this. And there may be some pieces of this that are helpful. Anything that my physical body does not require or need, I invite you to just literally wash through me. And that's what I'm hearing you say with this food groups as well. And I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me that I could do it with like food. <laughs> Like, wow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, and for me, when I, whatever food I choose to use, eat, I give, I give everything that I eat something to do. So if I'm going to sit there and I have a, I'll give you an example. The other day I had a huge, because the, the, the place where I bought this food, they showed me the size of a small bowl and a large bowl. My one mistake was I went in there hungry. I, I literally was starving. So when he showed me the small bowl and the large bowl, I'm like, that's small. that bowl is small. That, that's not enough food in that bowl. So I went with the large. My eyes, anyway, it was a large bowl of um, 
egg fried rice with extra onions. Now think of it, egg fried rice. Now, in theory, the average person would be like, egg fried rice, you're eating fried rice. Now, the last time I had fried rice, I can't even tell you when, but there was a lot. Once I actually had the plate in my hand, I'm like, wow, this is a lot of food. I enjoyed every darn bite of it. And before I actually decide to, to sit and eat it, I break it over. Mm -hmm. And I literally said, every bite of this that I am going to take is going to nourish my body. It's going to give me the energy that I need, not just for now, but for the rest of my day, in addition to all the other food I'm going to eat. This food is going to nourish me. I'm going to feel good eating it. I'm going to enjoy the onions. I'm going to enjoy the eggs. I'm going to enjoy the carrots and the peas that were in there because that was a little extra stuff they do in there. And I literally gave each of the food something to do for me in reference to the nourishment of it. Whether it was quote unquote healthy for me or not was not the question. This was something that I had wanted and my eyes were bigger than my stomach, but I went with the large plate and it was just a matter of just applying the energy work. And you may be sitting back asking yourself, well, do I need to be a, a Reiki uh, practitioner to attune my food? Now, you do not. Just rub your hands together, guys, because we all have the ability and just to feel that energy from one hand to the other and then very gently hover over your food. And just imagine that the energy is healing. You're blessing the cooks that cook that food. You're going to bless your body for nourish, taking in the nourishment of that food, and you're going to enjoy that food. And it's going to be a guilt-free process, which is a big reason why so many, again, conventionally, struggle with the relationship with food in their body because they may decide to eat something, and then within a half hour later, they have all this guilt associated to them eating what they ate, and they feel bad about it. And that is where the actual weight stems from, is the emotional mm -hmm. connection that they created based on feeling guilty from wherever that stems from. Because that's that's something that probably stems back to childhood and thinkings. Like if I myself took on all of the experiences I had when I was a child, where my dad at the right age, I think my daughter, my sister was 13, I was probably 11, and my younger sister was something like nine. Every Sunday, he weighed us. Every Sunday. Every Sunday, he put us on a scale. My older sister, unfortunately, um, started having a weight issue, and he was concerned that my, young, my younger sister and I would as well. Now, I was always like 20 pounds on the weight. So when he put me on a scale, it was more to see that I was maintaining my weight or possibly putting on weight. That sometimes I would step on a scale and literally have sock, um, rocks in my socks. Mm. Just so this way here, it wouldn't be this big fussy, I'm like, oh my God, she lost a pound. She gained a pound. She lost a pound. And I could have brought that into my adulthood and had that as my biggest challenge. However, I allowed myself to let that go. And I said, well, whatever the reasons to why my dad chose to do that at the time he chose to do it, it helped me just become this practitioner to help others work through whatever their emotional roller coaster it is with food and, and their weight and understanding what the weight is about. Can I you know, what back when... for just a moment here? Sure. Uh, and, and thank you for your patience for letting me interrupt you. Okay. I, By all I, means, I, otherwise yeah. I can talk, talk, talk. I, I can hear that. <laughs> and it's very valuable stuff that you're bringing us. And that's why I want to interrupt you and just kind of bring it back a, a couple steps. Who here got really emotional when the, when they realized that they each had the power to, to, to feel that energy and to have some control and power over their food? I had this huge wave of emotion come through me because it was this realization that I'm I'm no longer need to be tied to the machine, if you will, or tied to societal norms about how I treat my food. It, it, I, I'm just, my mind is boggled right now. I'm just, I feel so, like I said, I feel a lot of emotions coming up uh, to reclaim power, if you will. Yes, yes, yes. You're such a gift, I'm Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. And we do. We do have the power in regards, not just with our food. We have the power. The, the, the next thing I want to talk about is the weight aspect. 
you know, because that's a big thing in our society. You know, women, there's a certain image that women should look like, a certain size. I mean, we've gotten better where we're now seeing um, larger size models out there, thank goodness, curvier models out there, thank goodness. You know, but reality of it all is when we talk about weight, having to focus on being a certain way or thinking that we're supposed to be a certain weight. My approach, again, based on revolutionizing our weight, is that when a client comes to me, it's not about losing the weight. I don't want you to lose weight. If you're over 40 years old, I want you to hold on to your weight because there's going to come a time in your lifetime, should you be blessed to live past 70, that that weight that you are looking to lose right now is going to be something you're going to want to hold on to. Because once you hit 70, 75, 80 and higher, your body automatically starts to shrink, mm. especially if we are not doing something to keep it in that space of muscle mass, which is strength training. So when we think about our weight and to think about the relationship we have with our weight and the contract that one may actually have with their physical weight. Why did they call that weight in? And I know that sometimes it's a real challenging question. I've had many women say to me, what do you mean I called this weight in? Yes, you created a contract. Just like you create a contract, if you're doing a sale, you write a contract out with that other person, you have a contract with the weight that you have around your body. Now, metaphysically, when we talk about weight, body weight, whether we want to use the word fat, obese, whatever the word is, Metaphysically, all that is is a psychological wall that one has literally built around them to protect them from something or someone. Now, the idea is, when I work with a client, is to be able to get that client to go back in a time when they started noticing the weight come on. What was going on in your life at that time? Mm -hmm. Maybe three months, six months, or maybe even a year beforehand, what was going on? What loss happened? What trauma happened? What was taking place at that time? Because that is what's associated with that weight, which is why, again, psychologically, you created this contract to protect you from something or someone. Now, I have a firm belief that we all have a season. There's a season for physical weight to show up in our bodies. When we are going through something stressful, that weight may show up for a couple of things. First thing is to ground us. Because mm -hmm. when we are heavier, we're not going to move so fast. Think about holding on to an extra 20 pounds. If you've ever been pregnant, you know what it feels like to hold on to an extra 20 pounds. You're not going to run a marathon because you have the extra weight. So it slows you down. There's a reason why you're being asked to slow down. Another reason is about getting you to be more patient with yourself. Maybe you need patience during that season. So it's a grounding process. It's a slowing down process. It's a patient process. So rather than being so quick to say, I want to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, or whatever the weight is, perhaps you may ask yourself, what season, season am I in right now? What is going on in my life right now? that I might have called in this contract with this weight. And you may be sitting back asking, well, when the season's over, does the weight go away? Yes. When the season's over, you will start to notice that you're not feeling as heavy emotionally because, again, as I said earlier, this is an emotional connection. And I do want to bring one planet into this conversation. And the planet is Jupiter. Now, if you, do, if you don't know anything about Jupiter, the one thing I want you to know about Jupiter, it's about expansion. Not just expand, expanding your spiritual gifts and, and your luck and your, and your wealth. It's also about expansion, your body weight, your waistline. Currently, it's in Gemini. So anyone that carries Gemini ascending or Gemini moon, are more likely to be carrying a little bit of extra weight due to Ju Jupiter being in Gemini. In addition, with those who have Jupiter in Gem uh, Gemini in your ascending or your moon sign, if you also have ascending or moon in your water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, you may also carry a little extra weight during this Jupiter season as well. Because water energy, again, 
causes us to feel a little bloated. And just an FYI, I happen to have a stellum in Pisces. So water weight for me, goodness gracious, it's my friend. So I have to just accept the fact that there are sometimes I'm a little bit more bloated than usual. Now, does that mean that, oh, my God, I need to keep my diet at a certain point so my body fat can be low because I'm in the public eye and everyone sees me as a personal trainer? What kind of personal trainer has a gut? Because I have, I'm bloated. It's Jupiter season in Gemini, and I have a stellum of Pisces energy. Once you accept that that's what it is and you understand it's not just saying and using it as an excuse, it's understanding it. What can I do? due to this energy because again it doesn't matter what sign gemini is in i have a stellum in pisces mm -hmm. pisces is water i have a lot of water in my chart for that matter so i'm more prone to experience some bloat in my body so i have to make sure i'm getting my water in otherwise if i don't get enough water the next couple of days my body is a little bit more um retained you know, where I'm a little bit more bloated than usual. So I do need to be aware of that. And coming back to the medical astrology aspects of things, that's where I can get to see in your chart, are you prone to hold on to a little bit more water than the average person, just based on whatever your signs are? <laughs> it's it's so much to take in. Um Wow. What would a first step, like there's, there's people in here who, who you and I both know are very well versed on astrology. And then there are people who are not as versed on astrology. What would be a first kind of step or understanding? And, I, and, and I, again, I'm not necessarily throwing out the astrology piece because we need to do the astrology piece. Maybe what I'm asking is, what is a good first step for anybody, really? In regards to? Ooh, now you're making it tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what we say to astrology, I mean, are we just looking at the overall astrology chart? Are we looking at something specific regarding to, are they focused on, do they think um, about their body weight? Is Do they want to know what their body weight is associated with? Is it... Um, illness or disease or pain what is it that we're zooming in on i mean I ideally that. it's probably everything you yeah. know when someone comes to me they come in with one particular focus most of the time it's they come to me and like all right i have 20 pounds i need to lose and i'm like okay so why do you want to lose 20 pounds well because i don't feel comfortable in my clothes and i know when i was in my 30s i was much better at the at that weight well how the hell old are you now well, I'm 60. That was 30 years ago. So maybe you being that weight now may not be the best weight for you now. So how about we talk about recomposing your weight as opposed to thinking about losing the weight? And the minute I say recompose, they're like, what do you mean recompose? Well, we're going to reshape it. If I can get you to look more transformed and be the same body weight, would that be okay with you? It's a, I, you I, I'm hearing acceptance for who I am. Exactly. Exactly. You know, would that be okay? Or are you so stuck on that scale being 20 pounds lighter? Mm. And if you're stuck on that scale being 20 pounds lighter, then what we really need to do is sit down and have a conversation to what is the weight about on mm. an emotional level? At what point would you compared to somebody else or that you compared yourself to somebody else being a certain weight because the weight is just a number and if we're literally focused more on well i need to be this weight doesn't mean you're going to be healthy at that weight and i okay. i want that person to be healthy so again coming back to as you said you know the question about the astrology aspects zooming in on the astrology what are we looking at on the astrology aspects for that particular person at that particular time on whatever it is they are focused on. You know, weight loss or they, you know, they walk into their doctor, conventionally their doctor gives them a whole list of things that they're unhealthy about and they need to get healthy and 
well, I need to do this and I need to do this. I have to walk 10,000 steps a day. No, you don't. We, we already discussed that. We don't have to do that. No, 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 unless you really, really want to. And I'm not looking to walk 10,000 steps a day. So it's really about what that person comes to me for. And we start there and then we jump. As I, as I always say to clients, just because you come to me for one thing isn't going to be the same thing we focus on from that moment on. We are going to, to move through. We are going to self-discover what's going on with you, get you to discover who you are, taking the mask score. Because, again, most of us do wear masks based on who we've been told to be from different people. You know, not who we really are. I mean, some of us don't even know who the hell we are because we've been we've been programmed to believe we're supposed to be this as opposed to this. So for but just for today, as we say in Reiki, why don't you focus on just being you just for today? Forget about that 20 pound loss or forget about what you think you should look like. You know, close, close your eyes. Everyone close our eyes for just a moment and envision you as the healthiest, strongest version of yourself and see what that looks like. Not what someone is telling you you look like, but what is the healthiest version and strongest version of you? Because there's a philosophy, if you can see it, you can become it. So what I like to also do, I guess in the time we have left, if okay by you, is sure. pull a card for everyone. So it, it will give everybody an opportunity to also tap into their body based on one chakra that shows up, a word that definitely may add to their journey and their story, and then a number that could be very much associated with uh, astrology and numerology. And this is also part of what I do when I work with my clients in the revolutionizing approach of things, bringing cards into the play, my favorite part of what I do. Oh, I'm loving this card. Completion. Completion. Orange. Now, we talk orange based on our body. We're talking about the sacral chakra. What a perfect chakra. Because the sacral is all about our wounds that we've been carrying since we've been in our mama's womb. We carry our mama's wounds, by the way. I'm not sure if you all know that. You know, so everything your mom was worrying about at the time of conception during pregnancy and during labor for you, you carry all of that in your own energy field. So this may be a really good day to focus on letting it go, complete something, end that cycle, put an end to it, put an end to how you see yourself, put an end to the division you have for yourself based on what other people think you should be. And allow yourself to approach this revolutionizing way of health, fitness, and wellness. Start taking control of your own life because you have the power. You have the power to heal from within as long as you're willing to go within. Your answers are not on the outside. Your answers literally lie within your body. As you become more embodied with your body through strength training, I'm an advocate of strength training, folks. It's extremely important. If you're going to do any activities, that's the one I highly recommend. There's so much more to your buck with strength training than there is with any other activity you're going to do. And as I said earlier, once you hit the ripe age of 75 and older, you're going to want to maintain that body weight. It's extremely important. So the number nine, so, so, so powerful when we think about that nine. The higher wisdom, your higher consciousness, your ability to see beyond what the obvious is, your ability to see yourself as the best version, the healthiest and strongest version of who you are. Remember, you're already the best version of you. It doesn't get any better than this, guys. Now the idea is to see yourself as the best version of you. Love the body you're in. You only have one. You only have one body. This is your temple. Start taking care of it today. Start in that process of letting something go that is literally destroying your body. And that could just be a door. The way you say, the things you say to yourself. Communication is key. Start saying nice things to yourself. That nine is about letting go of something today so you can allow yourself to be in this revolutionized approach. Let go of the conventional and allow yourself just to feel your power, be in your own power. 
experience the power within you so you can transform your mind, your emotions, your body, and your spirit will guide you the entire way. So questions? Wow. Um, I'm just taking that all in because everything that you're saying is really hitting home. Um, Some of the comments in the chat too were about, you know, another way we measure our bodies. I mean, um, I only just recently was able to walk past a full length mirror in my mom's house and accept my physical nakedness and be able to look at myself like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I am very much in the process of accepting all the parts of myself and who I am and what I look like. Um, And it's those moments that you walk out of the house and you go into the grocery store and you think about, oh, I lifted my arm and there's the bat wing. And it's like, oh, no, I got to put that down. You know, it's all of these bits and pieces that, that we have been literally taught, shown and forced down our throats. Uh, with TV commercials and books and everything. And um, you're giving us such a beautiful, refreshing, um, energizing, empowering piece. Uh, Kitty, Kitty, come on, come on. <laughs> I, I do. I want to say, you know, thank you, Joanne. Um, I wish I had known you in 2019. I didn't meet you till 2020. Um, when I started, there was nobody. When I started looking at... Uh, why am I talking about weight? It's an outside measurement for an inside process. And um, you've taught me when I see the crinkly in my arm to go be, have wonderment about that. Well, that's kind of cool, you know, rather than what is it going to be become and oh my God. And, and immediately the thought of, oh, I'm aging. Um, And versus, oh, I'm aging, you know, not everybody gets no, not everybody gets that chance. Exactly. And, and I'm, it's so nice to hear this. I mean, you and I, I've been friends for a while. You've, you've taken what I started, but kind of clandestine and kind of brought it into the, um, so my question would be, since it's questions and as I would have told my students, that's not a question. That's a comment, Kitty, um, is I think what, picking back on Sandra's, what would be like the first step somebody might take because we have a lot of societal I know for me it was to stop talking about weight Mm. I was watching my mother pass away actually and she had been obsessed her whole life so that was my teacher was god all she she spent so much energy on weight and none of that comes back at the end of her life nobody cared um that was so how what would you say you would ask people to start with kind of shift well, that it, it's really interesting because as you were beginning to ask that question the first spirit came in and said for me to say this as opposed to what i was going to say and the first thing is and it's going to be bold and this is for the men out there too the first thing that i'm going to suggest that you do is such as what sandra said get yourself a full lens mirror mm. and every single day stand in front of that mirror naked Naked, not with clothes on. Take everything off. Love yourself completely. Because the one thing for sure that we all want is for someone to love us. We all want that. We're all looking for that relationship for someone to love us. Love us exactly as we are. And theoretically speaking, if you cannot love yourself exactly how you are, how are you going to be able to receive that love from somebody else? So that is the first step. Completely naked, get that full length mirror, dance in front of it, completely naked, stand in front of it, completely naked, love everything about your body. Because at the end of the day, you have to love the body you are in, Mm. in order to want to make the changes to empower yourself. You got to love yourself, the body you're in, not just your hair. Not just your shoulders, but your everything smile. about you. <laughs> not just your smile. Everything. Not just your eyes. Everything about you. Mm. You got to love everything about you. Yeah. That, I think that's absolutely beautiful. I know as I've gotten older, all of a sudden I'm becoming much more of a nudist. Who knew? You know, but there's a freedom. So I love that suggestion. Thank you. 
You're Thank you, Kitty. Um, if you want to drop uh, her freebie, her gift there, um, that would be much appreciated, Janice. Um, Joanne, um, I like what uh, I, I like what Kitty just kind of finished up with there. That um, as I'm getting older, I'm feeling like I'm a nudist. My neighbor is always out there, and he's got he has his shirt off mowing the lawn, and it's like, man, I want to be able to do that. I want to go out and mow the lawn with no shirt on, with no bra on. I want to be me. Sadly, <laughs> society doesn't let me be that outside of my house, so I do it inside my house. I love walking around inside my house. Um, nude or with my shirt off at least um hey if you're outside your own house and as long as your neighbors don't mind you may want to send a little memo out to your neighbors and say hey you know what I'm, I'm gonna be free-spirited today so <laughs> you might want to close your blinds because I'm going outside and I'm gonna do me well I do that in my backyard <laughs> sun tanning I'm topless in the backyard yeah you <laughs> um you have a beautiful gift that you'd like to share with the with the with the participants tell us a little I bit do, but that. I can't remember what it is <laughs> it's a 15 minute self-growth discovery session there you go there you go there you go I always come on forgetting something so yeah so yeah so anybody who's interested in taking advantage of a 15 minute self-growth discovery session where you and I sit down and we talk about one thing because it's only 15 minutes of one area that you, you want to dive into and see where we go with that feel free to schedule that self-growth discovery session with me. I'm actually, uh, the Facebook feed, there's been a beautiful soul. A friend of mine has been following along in there and I shared it over there for her as well. So um, yeah, very, very magical. Um, Kitty's dog has now entered the scene. And, and um, for me, dogs are all about um, confirmations. Nancy, what about yourself? What do you have that you would like to ask? I uh, click the link. It's not allowing. Oh. oh. So just a heads up on that. Okay. We will uh, check that out. So it's it's just a sketch. It's that silly Calendly, you know, stuff. Awesome talk. I loved every minute of it. Thank you. Um, the nakedness, you know, two things that I've learned this month. One, my granddaughter is got such a cute butt. And she runs around like, but, 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 and she wiggles it and she shakes it. So I do that um, naked. I've, I've really embraced that earlier this month. I went for um, a dress fitting and I went to get a certain dress, which did not fit me. And then the dress that the lady at the dress shop suggested Oh, it might have been me. Might have been me for the Calendly. Good to know. The dress that the lady suggested that I try on, I'm like, no, I can't do that. And then I tried on another one. And then I tried on the dress that she recommended, which is the color of your hat, except that it is um, mermaid rainbow sparkly. And it's got a bit of a plunge, which oh, can't show my boobs. So I covered those up a little bit. And then I pulled the napkin out. And realized in a moment that I was so much more comfortable sharing me as I am, full figured as I am. I really appreciated you explaining about what we're holding on to in this chapter of our life yes. until that chapter is done. Yes. So beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing that, Nancy. I just want to uh, piggyback what she said there because... Um, we had a wedding to go to this past weekend. Um, as it turns out, I chose to dress a specific way because of the weather more than because of the the event. And I had actually gone out to a store, same as Nancy, to go try on this dress, that dress. And um, I knew I had kind of like this thought in mind. And um, I had the choice between looking like a farmer girl or a potato sack. And then I, I, I kept looking at this one dress. And honest to God, it was very long, very thin, uh, very tight fitting, very striped, like stripes from top to bottom. And who hasn't heard, oh, don't wear stripes, they'll make you look fat. Well, I tried this on and in fact, it looked like the best out of all of these dresses versus the other one. So um, yes, literally stepping away from what society keeps telling us and step into the, the what Joanne has offered us here today. 
Joanne, any final words or does anybody have, before you have final words, anybody else have anything, comments or questions for Joanne? At the bottom, if you push the react button, you can actually raise your hand and it pops you across the screen so I can see you better to move you on to um, the thing. If you have questions, would love to hear from you. If you have comments like Nancy did. Maria. There we go. Hello, beautiful. <clears throat> Hi, Joanne. Hello, Maria. How are you? Good. Um, no, I really enjoyed your talk. And I was having thoughts because you're talking about the number on the scale and this and that. Um, I haven't owned a scale in probably four years, which was one of the most important parts of my weight loss journey was forgetting about the number because like, I remember gaining weight, first of all, like when I was at my highest, I was like 325 pounds. And I remember passing 250, 300 and being like, oh, I'll never weigh that. And then leaving it in the dust. I remember the numbers being a big deal. Now I have no idea, except for when I go to my friend's house, she's always curious. She's like, come on, let's see what you weigh. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's see. Cause she can see in me physically that I'm still losing weight. So I've officially lost a hundred pounds and thank you very much. And I'm wondering when, cause I'm, I'm kind of feeling so proud of that, that I'm like, is there a point where we backslide? You know, is there a point where I need to consciously push myself further than like, I never imagined I would have lost this much weight to be mm -hmm. honest. So is there, a way to like, is there a point where you need to like motivate yourself, even though you feel like you're already standing on, on top of the mountain? That's the thoughts I was having. Well, <clears throat> just to let you know, spiritually speaking, energetically speaking, I have tears in my eyes right now for you. And <clears throat> a big part of your, your, your question, the answer is, remember again, the weight that you're carrying is your emotional journey. As you start to release whatever the emotional energy is that was associated to the weight, the weight will automatically start to peel away. There's absolutely mm -hmm. nothing you need to do to continue that journey of, in your mind, losing weight. Ideally, just come to the point on if you feel comfortable at the weight you are now, embrace it and allow yourself, if you're not already doing so, allow yourself to start doing some sort of strength training so you can recompose the weight and feel really, really strong in your weight, whatever that weight is for you. Because again, if you're going to constantly have on your mind that, oh, I have to get to this next number, or I have to get to this next number, there's this constant negative self-talk and you're not accepting yourself of where you are. And more importantly, you're not, you're not recognizing how much you've accomplished at this point and that's really important to do is to the recognition of what you've gone what you've experienced to get to this point and allowing yourself that as you do start taking on a strength training routine you will recompose the weight the weight will look very different and you're no longer to be concerned about well do i need to continue this the idea is you want to be the stronger you want to feel the strongest and the healthiest in your body, whatever that number is. Even if we don't know the number, we don't need to know the number. I have absolutely no idea how much I weigh. The last time I was on the scale was um, 2014 when I did my last competition. I was on the scale because they weigh you for bodybuilding competitions to see if you're in your class. That was the last time I stepped on a scale. When I go to see my primary physician for my yearly checkups, he doesn't put me on a scale. You know, he literally says there's no sense because it doesn't mean anything for you. He's not looking to see for any specific prescriptions that I'm on because I'm not on any. You know, and in theory, in case any of you didn't know that, that's really the reason why the doctors weigh you. Because if your numbers are going up or down, your prescriptions may have to change based on the amount of weight you do lose or gain. Just an FYI. You know, so back for you, Maria, just to... Focus on, do you love yourself? Do you love the body you're in right now? Do you feel good in your body? Do you feel strong in your body? And that's the most important part of your journey. Wow. 
That makes sense. I like that recomposing because it's like, yeah, I like the thought that we're, we're always growing. So like, yeah, eventually I'm going to be even better than I can imagine right now. Just in a different way. It doesn't necessarily have to be smaller, just different. Exactly. You know, and, and just again, revisit the emotions that's connected to whatever's going on in your life at this time. And I know uh, a few months ago, I don't know what your story is right now, but I know from a few months ago from being in astrology class, you had a lot going on on a personal level, a lot of emotional stuff, roller coasters for that matter, that again, we have to keep in mind what's going on in our season. And is that season going to be something that's going to um, cause you to have, have to put on a little extra weight just to keep yourself grounded? And, and 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 more slow, slower, as opposed to constantly moving. Sometimes we need that moment of like slowing ourselves down so we can be in the moment so we can experience the season we're in and not rushing to get out of the season. I, I love that. And, and just before I bring Kitty on, um, it's so comical because I've been here for this whole talk. I've been like asking questions, highlighting moments, and it literally wasn't until that moment that you said it again to Maria that it dawned on me that, oh, wait a second, I've had like a whole crap load of stuff happening this year. I am in an emotional season. Oh my gosh. Like, so yeah, repetitiveness is so important um, to hear this again and again. Kitty, uh, you have a question or you like to add? No, it was all, it was a, and Joanne touched upon it. My first part of my journey, was exactly what Joanne said. I started telling the doctors, no. They'd say, well, I want to weigh you. No. I'd say, you can weigh me once a year on my physical. And at first I fought with nurses and and now they all just go, okay. I mean, you educate people how to react to yourself. And so I, I'm, you know, uh, it is, it's all about the medication. I just tell them, no, thank you. I don't need to be weighed. And it's funny because every year I'm down, not trying. So- Oops. So yes, yes, and, and when we and, and, we, and, that, and, and as as Sandra's saying in reference that she realized that she's in her season, who's not in their emotional season this year? I mean, can anybody really sit back and raise their hand and say, "Yeah, this was a calm, relaxing year"? I don't think so. I think we're all in a season, you know. And whatever that season is, you may be in your season where yeah, you're carrying a little extra weight. You may be in your season where you're lighter than you've ever been. So it really depends on what's going on in your season. And remember, a season doesn't just mean three months. A season can be a period of time. And when you're ready to address whatever the emotions are that's going on in that season, and when you address the emotions is when you're ready to go within to discover whatever's going on and, and, and the approach of the revolutionizing everything. You know, and Sandra mentioned earlier, if I had any final words, to leave everybody with. And my final words would be, learn to connect with your intuition. Mm -hmm. When you embody your own intuition, you can literally ask your body, does this work for me? Is it necessary for me to get on a scale today? Is it necessary for me to do X, Y, and Z? Learn to check in with your physical body, attune to your physical body. And when you make that connection, intuitively and we all are intuitive every one of us are considering the name of the show all about the woo we're all intuitive even though even for those people who are not in the woo we're all intuitive thank you so much joanne um thank like you. i said you're like you've been like a breath of fresh air to me today i imagine it has been for everybody else joanne thank you thank you thank, thank you. you thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about revolutionizing health fitness and wellness yeah it's the ongoing approach that i have anyway love it thank you so much